what? What are the odds? You. Me. Here on the street corner. In the Bronx. Now, I know we've been friendly online. You loved a lot of my Facebook posts. And in person, you seem like a decent person. But this fandom... No. My fans don't treat me like this. You are clearly something else. My fans, young lady, do not know where I live. They are expressly forbidden to find out where I live. Ergo, Quid erat demonstratum. You are not a fan. What are you? I I am a fan. I promise. Of the last 100 posts you made on Facebook, I, lo I loved all of them. But except for one, which told your fans not to come and find you. I didn't, I didn't think that was appropriate because you don't realize how you affect people on Facebook with your posts. We love you, and by you closing the door on us expressing affection, in real life you are only limiting yourself. And that's narcissism, and you're gaslighting us. And that is, that's a trauma response. So I politely invite you to reconsider whether your fans can meet you in person and I don't I don't think you're going to evolve as a, a thinker as a, as a philosopher whatever you consider yourself I do not consider myself a thinker or a philosopher okay well whatever you need to grow you're, you're not growing I love what you post I love what you post I think what you post is next to none but I think that you have reached a plateau in your expression. And I think that you close the avenues of feedback so people can't tell you. But the way that you delete comments and block people, like, I'll form friendships on your wall with these people. And then the next day, they, they tell me that you block them for making some kind of comment that doesn't even agree with the poster. I block them because they undermine the posts. They're not on my wall as an act of good faith or as an act of learning from me. Remember, on my wall, I'm the professor. My wall is the lecture hall. So when someone speaks up that's not 
right for them to disagree with what I'm discussing. It's my lecture hall. Um, so you're a professor? No, I'm not a professor. I'm saying this is an analogy to help you understand that when I speak, I speak the truth. And so people who undercut the truth get the boot. How come you've never explained that? Because if I, if I would have known that, I would probably not loved 99 of your last 100 posts. Well, I explained that 101 posts ago. I have zero tolerance for fuckery on my wall. I'm teaching the truth. And if people want to nitpick the truth, they can do it on their own walls. They cannot nitpick the truth on my wall. And neither can you, young lady. So if you will kindly excuse me, I'm going to make my way over to that deli over there. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so is our interaction here on the, on the street corner, is that your lecture hall too? Yes. I take the lecture hall with me wherever I go. And if people don't understand that I am the truth, incarnate, if they don't treat me with that degree of respect, I block them and I delete them. How, how do you block them? How do you, how do you block me right here? Like that. I block you by putting my hand in your face and telling you to go away, young lady. I'm going to the deli to get my spinach salad. Okay, so that's fascist? You haven't seen the half of it. All right, well, what is the half of it? I will also delete you. You're gonna delete me? How are you gonna delete me? I will delete you. Professor? You're a little bit, um, you're a little bit crazy. You can't delete humans. You want to try me? Okay, so that seems a little much. That seems like a physical threat. It's not a physical. your mind. I know the truth. I come in there and wipe it clean. Tabula rasa. That is what we professors do on the way to the deli in the Bronx when our Facebook followers, fans, accost us on a street corner without our consent. I know, but what I'm trying to do is give you feedback because I see you, I see you, and I think you have such a brilliant mind, but you are also like going down the wrong path. And I've flown in from Salt Lake City, Utah to actually correct you because I'm, Professor, I'm gonna be completely honest with you here. I think you're gonna get canceled. Because you know cancel culture. The left is going to find out about your lecture hall on your Facebook wall, and they are going to cancel you. You're going to be unplugged and deactivated. No. I've already dealt with the left. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, what about your fan base? They're getting alienated, too, because even though there's just a core of us that just love everything that you post and love everything that you do and we can't get enough, I do see a significant number of your fans who aren't part of the core. 
They're leaving. You. And I am their delegate in a way. I'm still, I still love you. I still think you're the best. I think there's no one like you. And, but I still think you cuckoo. I mean, we live in a cuckoo world. And you're just the right kind of cuckoo for the cuckoo world. If the world were not cuckoo, you would be cuckoo. But since the world is cuckoo, you're perfectly cuckoo. And I see that about you, but now I think you're just going cuckoo cuckoo. You know, like, we're concerned. Now when I press love for your posts, half the time I'm starting to get divided between love and like. Love and like, there's a big difference because once I hit that like button, I'm liable to find some other thought leader to follow. To be, see, that's it. That's why you don't matter to me. You call yourself a fan, but you are a fair weather follower. You're fair weather. Right when I get out of that overton window of your acceptable political discourse, you're going to move on to some other thought leader. I'm not a thought leader. I'm not a professor. I'm going to get my spinach salad at the deli. And I have told all of you, do not accost me in the Bronx because I got a lot of friends around here. And when I don't get my hands dirty with these things, they do. And it's going to suck for you because you came here out of the benevolence of your own heart. And I'm going to delete your mind and they're going to rough you up. And you're going to wish you never followed me on Facebook. Or you're going to wish that you just kept on hitting that love button. Because if you don't want me to go cuckoo, you need to keep hitting that love button. Because you know what happens to people when they don't get enough love, young lady. They go off the rails. They go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Now I know that you are a bright young lady. I know that. I can see it in your eyes. And I can see why you love hanging out on my wall and making friends, right? Friendships that last a lifetime, which used to be my tagline on my wall up there in the cover photo, because I knew that I would attract a core of really bright young people, ladies, guys, all of them, and they would converge and they would have a wonderful time on my wall. But I set up the boundaries, do you know? I set up the boundaries for a reason. I made numerous posts and videos that said do not come and find me, no matter how much you love me, because it's enough for me to get those little hearts on my Facebook page. It's fine for me. It's what keeps me grounded and anchored so I don't go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Okay, but now you are pushing away. Do you know how many of you kind have come and tried to talk to me in my own hood? No, how many? 1,462! You are 1,463! Do you know what that officially makes me? MAD! I feel like Fire Marshal Bill. Everywhere I go, someone is looking at me and starting a fire. Starting a fire of admiration, of devotion, of adoration, of turning me into a celebrity. I'm not a celebrity. I'm not even a professor and I'm not a thought leader. I'm just a regular guy trying to make my way through the world. And I do not need parasites in my life, young lady. I'm not. I'm not.
I am a college graduate. I am not a parasite. I found your wall and it changed my life and everything has been different since I found you. I have turned my friends on to you. Really, hundreds of people now know about you and their lives are being changed. You can't deny all that. You can't just push me away because of other people. I'm different from them. I'm 1463. I am follower 1463, so you cannot push me away. 1,462 people are not me. They're not the same as me. I'm here to give you a message. The message is you've got to stop being a fascist on Facebook. Do you know anybody who has ever responded warmly to being called a fascist? I saw this on Facebook the other day. A, a very thoughtful gentleman said, no one warms to being called a fascist. And here you have flown in from Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> Stalker 1463. 1463. To tell me that I'm a fascist because I block people and I delete people. Do you know something? I have no obligation to keep those people on my wall. I am the truth. I speak nothing but the truth. So help me God. You're totally going to get canceled. You are going to get canceled. And I want you to stay on Facebook so people can wake up. And they need to wake up to protocol. They need to wake up to manners and they need to wake up to decorum. They need to wake up to civility. They need to wake up to etiquette. Yesterday, you do not come on my wall and take a shit with your education, with your bachelor's degree. My wall is not a toilet for your indoctrination. It is not a commode for your dogma. My wall is the truth. If you have a problem with that, take it elsewhere. I'm not a fascist, so get out of my way. Professor, I'm not a professor, thought leader. I'm not a thought leader. I'm just a regular bloke on the way to get my spinach salad at the deli on the corner across the street. I am tired of the stalkers. I am tired of the lurkers. I am tired of the fans. I'm tired of the followers. I just want to say what I need to say. Post the truth. I need to live the truth. I am a dominant man. Then why are you talking to me if I'm such a lowly scum of the earth? Because I need attention. I need attention. I live and thrive on attention. I wait every day for those hundreds of hearts on my Facebook posts that validate me. Because even though I am perhaps the most brilliant thinker on the planet currently, I am living alone in a hovel in Bronx. I live in a basement. There are more cockroaches than anywhere else on the whole damn suburb. And this is what a man needs more than anything. He needs love. He needs love. The cockroaches can only give so much love. The cockroaches are little selfish baggers. They go and they eat crumbs and they hoard crumbs and they take the crumbs under the bed and they munch, much, 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 much of the crumbs. Have you heard a cockroach munching on the crumbs at two in the morning? And then there are thousands of them, so how do I counteract that? But by being a fascist on my wall and proclaiming the truth for all people. You don't understand me at all. At all! Everything that I know, all of my conviction, is organically sourced in the locality of my bedroom in the basement in a hovel in the Bronx with the cockroaches. The cockroaches! I have no friends off of the internet except for them! I have to feed them crumbs 
every day. That's the real reason, other than my spinach salad, that I go to the deli. I have to buy my friends some food, and then I talk to them. And do you know what it's like, young lady, to talk to cockroaches for hours on end? No. No. No, I don't. I don't know, Professor. And as much as I'm your fan, I think I'm gonna go now because it's just getting a little bit too crazy. Don't you go! Stay here with me a little bit and listen to my story about the cockroaches. The cockroaches. They come in different sizes, as you would suspect. They're very tiny ones. They're the smartest. And there's medium size and there's big ones. And the big ones, you would think, they are the most intelligent, but they're not. They're actually quite dull and sluggish, but they make the most attentive listeners. Whereas the small ones, you can't keep them still. They're always crawling around. They're skittering and scattering now. And I practice upon them. I feed them little crumbs. I do. I feed them crumbs. And I say to them, now it's time to listen to the professor. Not the professor, but only I'm the professor with them. The cockroaches are not the professor with human side, but I, I am. It's the lecture hall. So I have my lecture hall with the cockroaches. And I say to them, all that I end up saying on my wall. But they're my practice crew. They're the real family. They're the ones who love me for who I am. And I go over it and over it with them. And they regurgitate it back to me and parrot all my wisdom back to me. And I get a critical ear. And I listen to cockroaches. And I think to myself, oh, I'm on to something. These little buggers, they get it. They have insect brains, but they're not too inferior to human brains, if you know what I mean. And so, after their feedback, I type it up on my keyboard and I press send. And then you get it, young lady. It's been vetted by the cockroaches. There's thousands of them, but even if one of them says no, I can't. I can't post it for you because I don't want to lead your life astray. I don't want you to go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. But you know where this goes. Because if you are being led by the judgment of cockroaches, then you are already mad. You're out there doing the bidding of the cockroaches under my bed. Is it true? Am I really doing the bidding of cockroaches under your bed? The human wisdom that I offer the world is actually not human wisdom, but wisdom that I offer to the world comes from cockroaches. They're smarter than all the humans I've ever met. They keep low and they do their job and they don't cause any trouble. They're just living. They're not mad like you and me. These cockroaches are on to something. You will never find a cockroach on Facebook. Do you know why? Because a cockroach doesn't subsist on human.